Hello all, my name is Tyler. And I'm John. And together we are DeLon Rigging Solutions, or DRS for short. All right, so uh, let's uh, take a look now at um, how we translate marks on the floor, points marked on the floor, hoist points marked, to compare them to how we attach them to the structural steel. There's a lot of factors involved. There's uh, some load factors. There's some dimensional logistical factors of how we make it end up in the right place. Um, let's, let's try to take a, a, a pretty simplistic approach to this for starters here. <clears throat> First of all, let's just take plan view. This is our stage. And let's just take two hoist points. Let's say that the rigger is marked a point there and a point there. And let's say that there's structural steel directly over the top of that one, but not directly over the top of that one. So this point will be able to do what's called a dead hang. For this point, we'll have to, we'll have to make an attachment on the two pieces of steel that are closest to the point, but they're not directly above it. So for those two, for that point, those connections are gonna be what's called a bridle, where we'll, we'll have a wire rope sling that goes from the anchor points down to the hoist point. And what we're gonna talk about now is kinda of how, we, how we determine what the lengths of those, those wire rope cables are. In the case of this one, this directly underneath the steel, that's what we would call a dead hang. For that point, if our chain hoist has a, let's say it has a 50 foot chain on it. So we got 50 feet of, of chain here. I'm out of scale a little bit here. Let's go, let's say there's our 50. And our steel, our structural steel is at 80 feet. So that means to get from the steel to our chain hook, we need 30 feet of wire rope. And we're gonna say that this particular beam in this particular building that a five foot cable will go around it. So we're gonna say that that's a 30 foot down with a five foot basket. And that's what a rigger would mark on the floor here to tell us what wire to make up for that point. <clears throat> for this other point that, that falls in between the two pieces of structural steel, let's say, um, well, for easy math first, let's say if it was right here, if it was right in the middle between the two, then this could be an even-legged, what we would call an even-legged bridle. Now let's say that it's 20 feet between the two pieces of structural steel. That link there, the distance between the two anchor points, is a good building block to use for our bridle legs. So let's say we make each of them 20 foot. We've got a 50 foot chain and that's only 20 foot plus we're out of plumb, so it's going to be less than 20 foot. Let's say we need a 15 foot downhang there in order to get to our chain hook. So we've got 50 foot of chain, 15 foot of a downhang, so that brings us to 65 feet and 20 minus some, so we're going to be 80 and a little bit of extra. We'll leave a few feet of chain on the floor, but that's okay. That's better than having to pick up the hoist. So that's kind of a basic scenario of how we would figure out uh, what wire lengths to use for these two circumstances. We've got the length of chain, we've got the distance from the floor to the steel, and our wire rope that we make up has to 
fill that gap. Let's look now and see if we had a, 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 a point that is not centered. Let's say that this is um, 8 feet and this is 12 feet. So now we're not centered, so an even-legged bridle is not going to make us hit the mark. Now we've got to, we've got to do a little more math now. It's pretty basic math, but it still takes a little bit of math. Let's say that we're, that was 8 feet and that was 12 feet. So I'm going to stick with my 20 foot leg here on the short side of the bridle, the side that's closer to plumb. And what we want to calculate then is how long this other leg of the bridle needs to be to get us at that 8 foot mark. And let's say that we've still got a 50 foot chain. And if this is 20, we're still going to need at least 10, and let's call it a 15 foot downhang there, to, um, to get as much chain in the air as possible. Our goal will be to leave 5 foot of chain or less on the ground. All right, so we've got 20, we've got 8, so we know those two dimensions. We don't know this dimension here. We don't know how far it is from the apex of the bridle up to the structural line. So we've got a, a right triangle here and a right triangle here. And we know the dimensions of two sides of it, so we can calculate this dimension based on these two. Once we've calculated this dimension for this this side here, then, then we would only have one number missing over here. We can use that number to calculate this one, which this is really the one we're looking for. Um, but we need to go through some other math in order to, to work our way back to it. We're going to use a Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the, are the lengths of the sides. So that's a side, that's a side, and this is, a, this is the hypotenuse. Let's call that c sub 1, and over here we'd have another triangle, another right triangle with an a side, a b side, and let's call it C sub 2. And C sub 2 is actually the length of the bridle that we're trying to calculate. Back it up to our one where we have two of the three sides, so we have a way to calculate the third side. We've got A squared, so 8 squared, plus B squared is equal to C squared. We do a little bit of, of algebra. We find that b squared is equal to 20 squared, which is going to be 400. And minus 8 squared, 8 squared being 64. So b squared is going to be equal to 336. So B is going to be equal to the square root of 336. And so the square root of 336 is 18. 
0.33. So this height from the, from the steel down to the bottom of the bridle is 18.33 feet. Now we can use that dimension. Now we've got, the, we know the length of this side, we know the length of this side, so we can calculate the length of our other bridle leg. I'm going to move over here where I've got a little space, and I'm going to say that uh, 12 squared plus 18.33 squared is equal to C sub 2 squared. All right, so 12 squared is 144, 18.33 squared is 336. So C squared is equal to 480. So C is equal to the square root of 480. C sub 2 then is going to be 21.91 feet. So a little more than a 20 footer. All right, so by the math, our bridle leg is 21.9 feet. So I'm gonna translate that to, I'm gonna say 20 plus eight lengths of a deck chain with a five basket for that leg of the bridle. So if we were going to mark that on the floor for our, for our ground, rig, ground riggers to make it up, we would mark it as a 20-foot leg with a 5 basket and a 20 plus 8 links with a 5 basket and a 15-foot tail. And that's uh, doing it strictly by the math. That will be how we would get to this bridle length. Please remember that DeLon Rigging Solutions one shot train videos are meant as general overviews. Every system is different, every venue has different procedures. All statements made make certain assumptions about systems and venue similarities. Nothing can replace on site training with a qualified individual. If ever you have a question or concern about rigging, do not hesitate to reach out to us or another qualified vendor in your area.